Researchers say they were horrified when they discovered that for the first time, mass bleaching had affected the Great Barrier Reef in consecutive years. Do you know what coral bleaching is? Yes. What is it? Well, I don't know too well, but it's basically when there's too much carbon dioxide in the water and then the uh, coral gets harmed by it. From last I heard, it's when like people go underwater and they like remove coral and like paint it, paint it white. I, do, I don't know. Hi, Miss Camilla. I miss you. <laughs> it's when the sea floor. What is it? What? I have no idea. No clue. It's no. I don't know anything about coral bleaching. I know it's about. I mean, I guess coral, right? That seems fine. And bleaching the coral. I don't know really what it means. Just bleaching and coral. Researchers first documented global coral bleaching in 1998, a record warm year. And it happened again in 2010, but this third coral bleaching event is by far the worst. And looking at this temperature trend, you can get why people are starting to say goodbye to coral reefs. Coral bleaching is the whitening of coral due to an expulsion of their algae, zooxanthellae. The zooxanthellae serves as the coral's major source of nutrition and color. Bleaching is caused when the coral undergoes stress. The Northwest Hawaiian Island Reef alone supports over 7,000 species. They rely on reefs to hide from predators, find food and shelter, reproduce, and keep their young in the crevices formed by coral. With coral bleaching only expecting to worsen, however, the reefs that so many marine organisms depend on will be merely skeletons, which will drastically affect ecosystems. Coral bleaching impacts several aspects of human life as well. Reefs provide us food, construction material, and new medicines. In fact, more than half of new cancer drug research is focused on marine life. The loss of coral reefs would lead to an economic disaster for the fishing industry. The tourism industry would also face severe decline. Without reefs, forms of life both in and out of the water will face possibly irreversible consequences. Resilience of the ocean and forest, of course, lutter against the climate climatique. Euh, donc monter en puissance sur les énergies renouvelables, y compris les énergies renouvelables marines. Countries around the world in Paris last year have committed to a rapid transition away from fossil fuels towards more sustainable renewable energy. Scientists are currently placing breezing block pyramids on the seabeds of the coral reefs to reuse on the surfaces. Other research that is currently being conducted is possibly manipulating the clouds over the coral reef to brighten them which would help control climate change. Scientists are also working with 3D printers to hopefully expand our reefs. So maybe you're wondering, what are some specific ways you can help? For starters, if you're planning on going diving or snorkeling, avoid anchoring your boat on the reef. Additionally, cut down on your sunscreen and wear a long sleeve shirt or rash guard instead. It's important to remember that some ingredients in sunscreen can be harmful and even kill corals. There are other things you can do within your day-to-day -day life, like recycling or properly disposing your trash. Try walking, biking, using pu public transportation, or fuel-efficient cars to get around. This way, you're eliminating the amount of greenhouse gases emitted into the atmosphere. These emissions contribute to the ocean acidification, which hinders coral growth and increase ocean temperatures, which can cause coral bleaching. <laughs>